So in today's video, we're going to build a rack to hold pickleball paddles. Since pickleball is all the rage, our church have had much success with uh, having pickleball in this gym. We have three courts, and much to our surprise, the Baptist Church down the street, Heights Baptist, wants to put in some pickleball in their gym and so we're going to build them a rack so this is going to be some red oak that we're going to mill up to make the top of it and the carcass of our pickleball rack is going to be made out of plywood we're going to actually use pre-finished plywood to begin the milling process i need to take my raw lumber and cut it to size so i set my depth on my circular saw so i can just cut this board in half to get it to a manageable size. So this piece of lumber is 106 inches long and I need to get two 48 inch pieces out of this. So I'm going to cut this in half about 53 inches in total length for each of the two pieces. Next cut, we're going to use our track saw. So we keep our track stored above our doorway. And that way it's kind of out of the way. Okay. In preparing to mill this lumber, our jointer is eight inches wide, so we're gonna cut these boards in half. So we'll get two boards less than eight inches. Okay, now I've got two boards that are less than eight inches. And onto the next piece of lumber, we took each of the pieces we needed to mill up to cut to eight inches so we can get them to the size that'll fit on our joiner. And then we'll glue them all together to get a 16 inch wide panel. So this is the one piece I had to call out of the thing that we had, it had too many bad spots to make it lumber. Well, we got one, two, three, four pieces that are at seven, Six and a half, six and a half, and seven and a half. Those are what we're going to do to build the top. So we need the top to be 48 by 16. Here we are milling up the first piece of our red oak. It's just a matter of pushing it through the joiner for oh, four or five, half a dozen times until you get one side nice and flat. We'll show you what it looks like here in a moment. There you go. So after we mill one face of the board, then we move on to milling one edge of the board. And we get that nice and square before we take it to the planer. Now I elected to go ahead and trim the sides to dimensions before I took it over to the planer. Now to plane the boards to size. So we want to take the boards we're going to use eventually in our glue up and make sure we have those milled down to approximately the same thickness. So we just keep running them through one by one to get them smooth, and then we'll get them to the appropriate size. Okay, so we glued up our panel. I'll take it out of our clamps. So this is our oak panel that we made for our top for our panel. There we go. And with that, we'll cut it to size and drill our holes in it, and we'll go from there. Now we're cutting our plywood to size. So we need a 48 by 36 inch piece. We just use the track saw to make this cut. Then we cut our end panels, and again, these end panels are going to be 16 by 36. So we need two of those. So we're just going to show you one time because they both look identical. So here are the guys putting pocket hole screws in our plywood. That's how we're going to do the joinery for our cabinet. Workbench, we have pieces of plywood. And on the back side of our workbench, we have this flush panel that's flush to the edge of our tabletop. And so we can put a piece of wood flush up against this edge as well and knowing that we can clamp something up against here. So we have the match fit dovetails 
in this wood panel for the purposes of holding large pieces. So now we're gonna clamp it in there and show you how this works. So I have my side clamps, my bottom clamps already positioned down here. And I'm going to drop these guys in here and kind of position them this way. This left side is the top, so I want this piece to be flush up to there. So I'm gonna lift it up there and I'm gonna go ahead and, and clamp up this edge, bottom edge there. Alright, so now we come over to the other side and we do the same thing. We hold it flush to our piece here. Feels good there and there. Put that guy in, put some pressure on it. And then we like that, Let's put another pressure on that to hold the top in. All right, it's a little low. I'm going to lift up this side just. And we have our piece held flush to the top piece. So when this pushes in, this thing's going to stay flush. The piece we're screwing is not going to go up or down because it's already resting flat against the edge there. If it comes in this way, perfect. We want it to go into the side piece. This corner being our top, we want that flush. We're going to have a top on there. That'll fit. Clamp this down so it doesn't slide away from me for a moment. So back to our top. I've got Mark helping me here. Mark the holes and get them all taped off for our exact locations both vertically and horizontally to can drill these holes two inches. So here I am letting Mark drill these holes. We got 20 of them to drill so that's quite a few of them. It's a two inch Forstner bit so it takes a while to get it in and one of the tricks is getting your holes to go in straight. So we use a little guide here to make sure he has a reference point to get this hole to drill vertical up and down. So anything that you can have to help you drill make you a straighter hole. Now we want to put a little round over on each of the holes, both the top and the bottom, so when people slide in their pickleball paddles, they won't have any rough or sharp edges to scrape up against. So this is a little easy, quick little task and just knock it out. So I have my pickleball paddle rack upside down to install the wheels. So we wanted to have a front lip that would be two inches from the ground so pickleballs could not go underneath it. So what we're going to do is put a little lip in here. We'll cut this to this, match that about an inch and a half wide. And then the distance from here above there will be approximately two inches. So we're drilling the holes to attach our wheels or casters with bolts. Then we just take our bolts and enter them from the top side through that, bolt them in, and what do you know? We got wheels. Our top little three inch piece was too small for pocket hole screws that might come out. So we used dowels to attach them. Tack the ends of this little piece, this little piece to hold this. Now I'm gonna put some dowels across here, even with the holes, that'll be a nice little spacing. See how that works out. Hammer in some dowels. Oh, hold the top down. And doing a rough cut, I'll come back and cut these a little bit later flush. I just want to be able to use this to finish the rest of them. So I have the two ends done and the back pinned and that way I make sure it doesn't move any. So I drill the holes for the dowels in line with the pickleball paddle holes. Makes for a nice complementary spacing. So we took pieces of oak like this and cut off little thin strips, eighth of an inch or less, and glued them on for veneers on the front side of our cabinet to hide or cover the plywood. So we have a nicer looking finish on all the edges. So now we have to take off all the tape. All right, the next step for our pickleball rack is to 
attach our shelf lips. So that'll be the middle shelf. And I have this one clamped on here. So I wanted to initially be able to attach this little lip from drilling underneath, but you can see I already have attached the bottom ball guard to prevent balls from all rolling underneath it. So I'm gonna to have to drill in through the lips to go here. And so I've got the counter sink bit at that length. So after evaluating the depth of that one and a half inch screw, just barely getting into the plywood, I decided to go to one and five eighths and I'll drill it to there. So here's the cabinet complete with a mineral spirit swipe down to get all the dust off of it, ready for finish. So here's the pickleball rack. How do you know which group of paddles is up next? When it says next at your slot, well, that's how you do it. So I created this block of walnut with a little groove and put a little Wrap it in the back of it here so it could slide and have a little dowel in the back to hold that in. It's locked in. If you need to take it off, you just unscrew this little piece right here. So we decided to use Rubio Monocoat Pure for our finish on our pickleball paddle rack. And so this is a clear coat on the red oak that we're using and we're just wiping it on. It takes about 15 minutes to scrub in, let it dry, and then wipe off any excess that you have on your piece. Easy application, it works great. We didn't have to do anything to the plywood because it came pre-finished. Okay, we got a coat of Rubio on it. We got it wiped down. Mark's finishing up little small touches. And we're ready to play pickleball. All right, looks good. We'll have to attach our one scroll up here. Who's got next? There we go. 